my beautiful <laughs> and graceful buckskin Sparky. So we're heading out the driveway today. Oh, I parked my truck in a bad spot. I don't know if we can get around that. Mission accomplished. Pass the truck. Let's go out. I like how Sparky's color blends with the dead grass. Incognito. Nope, no, no. So Sparky's trustworthy and great and all, but uh, a little more playful and wants to sample the vegetation right out of the so gate. Here's a small piece of road we take to get up to some other trails. Um, on our longer excursions, you can expect to see this little part of the road, which is still quite beautiful and foresty. Um, not super busy, just the occasional log truck, which you can hear coming 15,000 miles away. And typically familiar drivers, very polite. A little story about me finding myself I mean, I always know where I'm at, usually, because I wear a GPS. No, but really digging down and finding out who I am, what do I enjoy, uh, controlling my emotions, my fear mainly. I was going off to Wyoming, oh, I think it's been six years ago, my first trip as an apprentice. And I've grown to love it, don't get me wrong, but my first year I was so overwhelmed, terrified, absolutely hated it. But during those three weeks, I learned to suck it up, see through my fears, control my emotions, control my horse, and I caught a glimpse of myself. Uh, there's a little boardwalk there at the Powderhorn Ranch. I saw in that reflection, and it was just a passing glance at, uh, through a window. Um, there's a tax store and um, some other little rooms, offices, I think. Uh, anyone who's been to the Powder Home knows what I'm saying. Uh, it's a boardwalk with the bathrooms and stuff. So anyway, I was making my way to or from the bathroom and I caught my, my reflection in one of those glass windows. And I saw the, the cowboy hat, the dust, the spurs, the sound of my spurs and boot hitting that boardwalk. I was tired, uh, thirsty, scared, but not nearly as bad as I had been. And it was that moment, that image, it just seared into my brain. Yeah, this is, this is who I am. This is who I want to be. You know, when you got a thousand pounds of goofball underneath you, it, get, it can be a little unsettling, but I did learn how to control myself first and foremost, which then helps them calm down. Just like Sparky here after a couple jogs and lopes up this hill is losing interest in the vegetation and being goofy, although he's real interested in this spur over here for some reason. I consider myself very lucky to have found my passion and go with it. I worked very hard to get here. I, I used to be terrified to, um, to ride alone in an arena in my own backyard. And that's, that's the truth. But I gotta learn to trust them and they, they tr then they trust me. And that's kind of what the journey's about. Trusting them, them trusting me, trusting God where he's put me in life and I believe I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. It's 
wanting to ride this new trail, but I guess they don't want us down there, Sparky. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's too bad. Darn it. Hmm. Okay. I'll turn around, I guess. We know when we're not wanted. That's fine. Got our back to the sun, heading home. Not the trail I quite had in mind, but it was fun nonetheless. Still beautiful. I mean, look at the sky. So anyone interested in joining us? I've got Carl, this here Sparky, and the cutest mule, Bo, who would be happy to carry you around uh, any of these trails, really. <sighs> it's just nice getting out. I need to head home anyway. It's going to be 103 today. Had a little bit of a false scare. Got some guys up there shouting and screaming. And, whew, I thought they were yelling at me. They're just overly stimulated about backing up a trailer. I better get out of the road. I'm done. You're done? I finished my section. It's getting hot. It is. This is Logan, my son, and his cute side by side that's a nice ride it's Zeus. Zeus all right well I'll see you at home in a little bit all right. bye as we mosey on down this hill back home I would like to clarify what I meant by hating my first year at the powder horn it absolutely had nothing to do with the hosts. Uh, Susie and Deemer True could not have been more lovely. The arena could not have been more gorgeous. And Ken could not have been more informative and helpful. In every way imaginable, everyone just amazing. And all my classmates uh, just supportive. I made some lifelong friends. What I hated about that first year were my, my fears facing down my own demons. Uh, demons that had built up over my lifetime. Look at that view. The demons that had built up uh, fear of the unknown. Fear of, well, pretty much everything, I guess. The very first week, um, I believe like the fourth day. Sparky, you're going a little, little faster, buddy. Just very <laughs> painful, lifelong, embarrassing moment. I, I got thrown into, I want to say, a huge metal fence. I mean, way over my my head. And I'm 5'8", I'm so at least six feet, if not taller. Hit the top of the fence with my back. Sparky, come on now and slid down the fence, hit my head on the ground. The horse goes bucking and farting off in the distance. Again, not the horse's fault. So that was, that was humbling and a huge lesson, but I got back on that horse uh, within a couple days. Ken sat with me and talked me through it. Uh, he saw that I, my lips had turned blue, I wasn't breathing. And uh, I, I gradually learned to trust myself in that horse somewhat, somewhat, that horse. I really wanted to keep going, keep learning, and get my master's. I went back for my, I, I, the first year I was apprentice, second year journeyman, just a whole different experience. 
more friendships, more horses, more lessons, but nothing like that first year. And then my third year, my master year, uh, Ken doesn't let up. He pushes hard. And you've got to push yourself hard. So physically, I reached my limit. I had bruises and worn off skin uh, in very interesting places. It was oh, one of the, it was the most physically taxing experiences of my life. And I'm so thankful for it. So very thankful. Now I know what I'm capable of. Whoop, we got a car. We just encountered, uh, before I shut the phone down here, um, some new neighbors I hadn't met before. They came up uh, hauling a trailer full of bicycles and wood and stuff. And, and Sparky did fine with that. That's just fine. We chatted him up a little bit. Uh, the gentleman was a soft speaker with a loud motor, so I only caught half of what he was saying. And just as we were shaking hands and kind of wrapping up our conversation, my son came zipping around a blind corner uh, on a little mini bike. Got him a little excited, which showed me we have some work to do, Sparky. And, I mean, he didn't do anything bad, just got tense and hard to reach, you know, when they throw their head up like a giraffe. It's worked him through it just fine, no problem. And just as we rounded another corner, three donkeys came running up on a fence kind of like as close as that tree is there it's donkeys which set him off again we had to deal with that had i not practiced um one one rain stop uh riding unfamiliar horses pushing myself and them to their limits had i not practiced that the uh, every time I went to the Powderhorn for three years in a row, and then again, I went back as a teacher, so four years, and all the practice I do on my own. Without that, I'm pretty sure what we just encountered would have been a train wreck. Um, let's go up the hill because you kind of made a fool of yourself today, just slightly. But had we not practiced those things, um, I don't think we would be able to get a hold of ourselves and our emotions. <sighs> yeah, we're still working on it. Truth telling time. After that last call out to his buddies, we rode a pretty steep hill and along a ridge. Was not my um, ideal way to end that ride. Actually, it wasn't my ideal ride. Uh, there were scary donkeys, scary motorcycles, scary trailer. Sparky wasn't doing his best. So we worked our hill. When horses are put to work like that, and I'm not saying I'm beating over, the, beating them over the head or spurring them relentlessly. No, I'm just, I'm putting them to work. Here's part of our little hill. It, it goes way up there, but putting them to work enough where he needs to think about breathing he needs to think about uh, conserving his energy towards the task at hand where his feet are going to go when you call to your friends when you act silly the ride just gets longer and more challenging you could use that as a metaphor for life the older we get, the more experience we get, <laughs> the harder our life lessons get. And we can choose, there's part of our hill there too. We can choose to run away. We can choose to call out to our friends. There we go, it goes all the way up. There's a ridge up there. We can have our friends uh, bail us out uh, or, or do the task for us. Or we can focus on the task at hand, quit wasting time, and get it done. I don't believe getting after, like hard, um, punishing, I guess just all out, senseless whipping, spurring, scaring a horse is counterproductive. 
but there are times where, say, a, a herd of tiny donkeys captures their attention, captures their emotion so fiercely, there's no getting through. Um, at least that's what happened to me today. Not a good feeling. Not acceptable to, to check out that like that at all, really, and to make decisions that um, didn't benefit either one of us. He acted the fool, didn't you, Sparky? So we're just going to hang out in here for a while. What it comes down to is this. I let myself down, and I let Sparky down. I love this horse. And I just think he's so sweet and funny and cute. I've let him kind of get by with stuff. I need him to pay attention and I need him to trust me. And I think he does about 85%. Yep, that's a phone. It's that last 15% I just, I need to work harder at getting. And that's all on me. All right, Sparky, I mean. Spark, you could have done, you could have done better. You could have done better. But so could I.